All right, you guys, uh, we're going to graph this system of inequalities, which is going to give us the solutions to the system. Once again, for these, we need to find where both uh, an area or quadrant or whatever you want to call it that is shaded by both equations or inequalities. Now, it's important to remember if we have a less than or greater than that it's going to give us a dashed line. If it's less than or equal to, or greater than or equal to, then it is a solid line. So notice, in both of these inequalities, they're both equal to, so we will be using solid lines on these. And once again, just as a quick review, we're going to be using slope-intercept form, which is written there at the top right, y equals mx plus b, m is the slope, b is the y-intercept. Now the reason we review this is because this top equation is written in slope-intercept form. The second equation is not, so we will have to change it into slope-intercept form. Now in the next example and the next video, we're not going to be using slope-intercept form. We're going to be using standard form in order to find the intercepts and then we're going to graph from there. But that's in the next video, so if you want to see that method, go ahead and look at that video. But for now, we're just going to graph this one using slope-intercept form. And I'm going to graph this top equation in red. Notice, it gives us the y-intercept, which is a positive 3. So we have the point zero three. Now the slope on this one is a negative 4, but we can turn that into a fraction, negative 4 over 1, which gives us our rise, down 4, and our run, 1. And this pattern continues, down 4 to the right 1, down 4 to the right 1, which gives us these other points. Addition. Now I can change where the negative is so that we can go in the other direction. So I would have 4 over negative 1 instead, which means only that I would go up 4 and to the left 1 to this point, and the next point would be off of the graph. All right, so my line should look something like this here. And it is solid, again, because this is also equal to. So any points on this line give us a true statement. Next thing I will do on this specific example is I'm going to test a point now. And that will help me to know which side to shade. So I'm going to again test 0, 0. And then we just see if it's true or false in the inequality. So. I just replace the y and the x with 0 and then see if this is a true statement. So 0 is less than negative 4 times 0, 0 plus 3. 0 is less than or equal to 3. This is true. Since this point gives us a true statement, I know that I'm going to shade the same side of the line that that point is on, which I will do now. All right, so there we have it. Now these can look a little sloppy by the time you're finished, so it's important to remember uh, which is your final answer in terms of the part that's shaded. Otherwise your teacher may get confused and have to take points off, okay? So I'm going to use different colors in order to shade these, which hopefully will help you to understand what the actual answer is. So the next thing I'm going to do is change this second equation, which I will wrap in purple into slope-intercept form. So what I want to do is add 3x to both sides. So I have add 3x. I'll add 3x. Now I can't combine that negative 15 and the 3x. So I just have a 3x and I'll make that a minus 15 because they're unlike terms. Next I will divide everywhere by the 5 so that my coefficient of y is just a 1. y is less than or equal to 3 fifths x minus 3. See what this has done now is it's given us the y-intercept is negative 3, which I can put in onto the graph right now. There it is, 0, negative 3. Next, I will use the slope in order to find the next point. So notice that's a positive 3, so I would go up 3 and to the right 5, which would put me at this point. 
and I would repeat this pattern to find these other points as well. And we can repeat the pattern this way if we wanted to show the steps so that it's a consistent staircase, maybe something like this. So there's my second line in purple there. And what I'll do next again is to test this point, zero, zero, because it's not on the line, just to see if it's true or false. Again, if it's false, I shade on the other side of the line. All right, now notice I'm using the original inequality to solve this. You don't have to. You can use the one that you manipulated into slope-intercept form. However, I'm going to use this one just because it's our original. And so just in case we made a mistake, it, we may have done it wrong there. Okay, so what I have here is negative 3 times 0 is 0, plus 5 times 0 is 0. And this should hopefully help you to see why we use that point, the origin, because it easily, especially in standard form here, gets rid of the x and y's. So a 0 less than or equal to negative 15. In this case, for the purple one, this one is false. So I'm going to have to shade on the other side of that purple line there. Now remember, the final answer for this one will be where both of the areas are shaded. And I'm going to do this one in green. So we can see that where there's purple and red is this shaded area right here. That's your actual final answer. And we can get rid of that other stuff just so we can see it. But for some of you, your graphs are just going to look like this. Okay, You won't be able to erase it all because sometimes that's a little difficult. Again, you can use cross-hatching like I've done here. You can use different colors. Uh, sometimes people will use red and blue, and then the shaded area is purple because that's where they're combined. Whatever you want to do, as long as your teacher or your professor understands what you're doing, that should be helpful. So let's go ahead and get rid of this just to clean it up a little bit. And there we go. That's a cleaner graph, just so you can see it maybe a little bit better. And that, again, this green shaded area means that any points in that shaded area would give us true statements not only for one of the equations but for both.